Alrighty guys, so Sound Squatch here again. Rogers Pass. It's the Big Bend Highway. We did and the Mike Creek Dam there. Was initially built, check your fuel, 150 kilometers total for fuel. The Big Bend was initially built because they said they couldn't construct the road through Rogers Pass because the railway gave them enough trouble. So they built the Big Bend as an alternative and thought, oh wow, the Big Bend's gonna be easier. But you know, anybody who's driven it can tell you what, what a joke that is. So we're gonna drive the Trans-Canada Highway. We're gonna drive the road that did away with the Big Bend. And before Rogers Pass, the road, because there's Rogers Pass, the railway line, and there's also Rogers Pass, the road. Before that, the Big Bend was, that was how you got to Golden or by train. So you'd load your car on a train in Revelstoke or Golden and take it on the train line. But they built the highway, which is this highway that we're gonna take. And it goes right through Glacier National Park. Now, for you Americans, we also have a Glacier National Park in Canada as well. So ours is up here. You guys, I think Glacier is in Montana in the States. And this park's gorgeous. You'll see when we get into the past too, we're starting to get into a little bit, why this was so problematic for building a road slash railway. And the uh, the weather in here, man. The snow, just, uh, yeah, it's, there's ugly ab rogers he was this called rogers pass after mr ab rogers he's kind of a nightmare of a person to work with apparently but you know you don't you don't blaze a trail through the mountains for being a nice guy he was the one that said oh no you can do this he, he was a surveyor he was like oh no we can do this and so he kind of led the charge through rogers pass which is why it's called rogers pass so we've got four parks of big significance national parks that we're going to go through you have basically how it goes in the chain is Mount Revelstoke is first. Mount Revelstoke National Park, Medicine Sky. Next one is this, Rogers Pass and Glacier National Park. The next one is Kicking Horse Pass and Yoho National Park. And then Banff. It's the world class, world famous. Banff is kind of the, the OG, like the big one. But these parks are all same level as Banff. And frankly, like Banff is nice guys, but it's so crowded there. Every newspaper or magazine article in the world tells you to go hike there. We're gonna do the the unknown map, the the lesser seen, lesser traveled map, because that's more of a fun way to go about it. But the avalanches in Rogers Pass were a big thing, so they have these avalanche cannons. It's a memorial. Yeah, shooting artillery at the mountain, and literally, like, and the guys in Alaska, anybody from Alaska can uh, second this. They get artillery like heavy artillery from like the war, World War II artillery. And they have these old cannons. They shoot this artillery at the snowpack. It basically controlled avalanche pretty much. Similar to like what they were doing on the Big Bend with explosives. But here they just literally have a, like a like an artillery gun and heavy artillery. And they just shoot heavy artillery at the side of the mountain to clear the avalanche. So it's pretty cool. Trans-Canada Highway, as you can see, busy, 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 right? Made for fair. BC to Alberta, basically. Whether you're coming to BC or you're going to Alberta, this is pretty much the way you gotta go. You can do the crow's nest, but that meanders for a long time. It's a much longer route. This is kind of the short, concise, and to the point. But lots of traffic, guys. Parks, Mount Revelstoke National Park. So that's like I was saying, we're in the chain of national parks now. It's gonna get really nice guys the scenery here is like world class alrighty guys so right and kind of getting into rogers pass here so you tell me any engineers here you know project managers planners you want to build a railway or a road through here and mind you none, nothing's developed there's like not like this like just raw untouched wilderness and you're a surveyor or like a manager or an engineer and they're like can you build this go right you know try and have at it right so A.B. Rogers, well, he he was like challenge accepted, right? So he, he did it. So then they called, they named it Rogers Pass after him because, you know, without him, it might not have happened. Like stunning, stunning scenery and just, just rugged, like totally rugged. Just, yeah. And lots of snow here, guys. In the wintertime, like 20, 30, 40 feet of snow. Lots and lots of snow. <laughs>
this was harder to build than the Big Ben. They built the Big Ben first because they thought, oh, well, yeah, that'll be a great highway to use in the wintertime. Like, okay. <laughs> like I said, any old timers driven that highway, you know, right? No, it's not a, it's not a nice highway. Well, like, you know, no. So, but they didn't have this one because they thought they could build it through here. And then eventually they kind of wised up and built it. It did away with the need for the Big Ben, right? And it, that's what the Big Ben did. Rogers Pass snow sheds. So this is the snow sheds. We're about to enter a series of snow sheds here. This is because in the wintertime, there's all this snow up on the mountains and the steep gradient of the mountain will just cause the snow to fall off into an avalanche. Sheer rock. And they did the same thing for the railway. When they built the railway, it had snow sheds as well. And it's basically just to protect the, the road and the cars from an avalanche, which is initially why they didn't want to build this highway because they were worried about these are the kind of things they had to do to build. The Coquihalla has a snow shed. Same kind of terrain mill. Lots and lots of concrete, rebar, and steel, and everything. Yep, Glacier National Park, guys. Welcome to Glacier National Park. Now we're driving through uh, Glacier. Everybody talks about Banff, but like Glacier, Mount Revelstoke, Yoho, Kootenai, like there's a lot. There's more than just Banff. Like Banff is nice, but that's where you hear it. Banff and Jasper was the only two you ever hear anybody talk about. So nice. And it's, you know what's funny is even when you're expecting it, it's still that bracket. Lots of history in here, guys. Alrighty guys, so Rogers Pass Memorial. This is a big one. Glacier National Park. That's the highway, Trans Canada there. See the ice there, the glaciers. Let's see what we got here. This is the actual memorial itself. Grizzly Mountain, Glacier National Park, this whole thing. Rogers Peak, Swiss Peak, lots of different mountains. 1885-1985 to be open July 2085. The Trans-Canada Highway Act passed unanimously by the Parliament of Canada in 1949 provided for the federal government and the provinces to share equally in the cost of the project in 1956 with the intentions of speeding up the work in those sections of the route where no previous highway existed the act was amended by Parliament to provide an additional 40% contribution by the federal government on 10% of the mileage in each province. Construction on the 140 miles of the route which passed through Glacier, Mount Revelstoke, Banff, Yoho, Terra Nova National Parks was entirely a federal responsibility and was carried out by the Department of Public Works Construction. On all other portions of the route was carried out by provincial highway authorities. The Trans-Canada Highway has been opened and described as the longest national highway in the world. It begins in St. John's, Newfoundland and ends in Victoria, BC a distance of 4,860 miles. Rogers Pass was discovered in 1882 by Major A.B. Rogers, chief engineer of the Mountain Division of the Canadian Pacific Railway, known as the Railway Pathfinder. He had developed a reputation earlier for his railway building in the United States. Opposing the pass from British Columbia in 1881, he traced the Ilichilowit River to its source in the Ilichilowit Glacier, but was forced to turn back when he ran out of supplies. He approached the pass from the east by way of Connaught Creek, formerly Bear Creek, and recognized an open stretch of meadowland at the site which he had seen in the previous year. From the slopes of Mount Avalanche, his discovery was followed on November 7th, 1885 by the driving of the last spike at Craiglahi, 60 miles west of here, marking the completion of Canada's first modern coast-to-coast -coast transportation system. So Craiglahi, guys, that's what I was saying, right? Craiglahi, last spike. It's all connected, guys. The history of Canada is in large part a story of growth and development of its transportation. Our first mode of transportation on the birch bark canoe was ideal for use in exploration and in the fur trade. The Durham boat, the bateau, the New York boat, the stagecoach, the Red River cart, and the paddle steamer all played their role in the extension of the trade. The Transcontinental Railway was an essential part of the Union Agreement. This memorial commemorates the ceremonial opening of the Trans-Canada Highway, an important new link in our transportation system. The major arch symbolizes Confederation, while the minor arch represents the transportation services supporting it. The three walls are symbolic of the three oceans by which Canada is bound, the Arctic, Atlantic, and Pacific. Trans-Canada Highway, Quebec, 
Ontario, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Manitoba, British Columbia, Prince Edward Island, Saskatchewan, Alberta, Newfoundland. The territories would be none of it. Yukon and Northwest Territories. They're all part of Canada, so they get included. And then these are the avalanche cannons, guys. So right here, this this is the avalanche cannon. Packing this full of artillery, eh? Shooting it at the slope. So they shoot it at the slope there, so all the snow will fall off. Avalanche cannon, old World War II artillery. Rogers Pass, 1890. So yeah, Golden's this way, and then the train, look. So how many we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 20, 30. 30, 30 snow sheds in Rogers Pass. Oh, clearing snow. Yeah, when it snows. Yeah, this is how much snow they get, guys. Look at that. Power lines taken down, the boys in there working hard, clearing the rail track out. Here, this is what it would have looked like in 1915. The hotel and everything. It'd be cool to come stay here, man. It'd be really cool. The actual visitor center itself is beautiful. The tip post and beam timber construction here. This is beautiful, man. Nice lag bolts going right through the columns here. Ooh. Solid, man. Look at those washers. Decent. Beautiful timber frame construction, man. The notching. Oh. Look at that. Yeah, they got all their brackets to Vancouver. Hope. Kamloops. Revelstoke. We're here. Golden. Banff. Calgary. Avalanches slash through the mountain forest from alpine tundra to the valley bottoms, creating distinctive fourth zone in the park. Only shrubs that bend with the blasting snow and plants sheltered from it can survive here. Avalanches rip trees from slopes, which can then support a wide variety of metal plants. Grizzly bears scour avalanche paths in spring, digging up succulent bulbs and grazing the new growth. Numerous avalanche paths can be seen in the slopes across the valley from this building. Oh, Rogers here. Major Albert Bowman Rogers. Yeah, there you go. Look at that mustache on that guy. Insane, man. A gnarled little whippersnapper of a man driven by ambition, known for his astonishing profanity of his speech and his apparent ability to exist for days in the harshest climates on little more than hard tack. Sea biscuit. His voluminous sideburns waved like flags in the breeze. His piercing eyes seemed to look through everything at once. Every few moments, a stream of tobacco juice erupted from between his sideburns. <laughs> chew, man. They love their chew, those guys. There you go, it's the Chew. Major Rogers discovered Rogers Pass, May 29th, 1881, while seeking a route for the Canadian Pacific Railway through the seemingly impenetrable Selkirk Mountains. Accompanied by his nephew and 10 Shuswap Indians, he first set eyes on the potential pass from the crest of Mount Avalanche. He was forced to turn back due to lack of food and provisions, but confirmed the route a year later from the east. In gratitude, the CPR named the pass for Rogers and presented him with a $5,000 check. Whew. 1881, damn. Initially, he refused the cash check, preferring instead to display it in a frame. <laughs> the guy, this guy was a character, man. Like, look at his, look at his mustache. Yeah. Tobacco juice coming out of every five seconds. And then this is his path. 1882 route, and then his eight, 1881 route here. And that's statue of him there. Alrighty, guys, so you should be able to see some of the avalanche paths here, like that one there. There's a couple of them. You can see where the bush is just completely wiped out. That's a big one there. That's an avalanche path. Anyways, guys, we're coming to the end of this one, Rogers Pass. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. This one will be cool. There'll be more train-specific stuff, like Connaught Tunnel. That's another video, another, another thing. But it's, it was cool to see Rogers Pass, see the history, National Historic Site, see the memorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's really nice. It's so beautiful here, man. It's hard to describe. Uh, make sure if you are coming out this way, you take some time to do it because uh, you definitely won't regret it. And anyways, guys, that's going to be it for me. Like and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get notified, and uh, Sasquatch Prospector out. Oh.